Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 30 of the Dinosaur Review Show. And today we're going to be reviewing T-Rex. Yes, we're going to start T-Rex. We currently have over 60 models of T-Rex available for sale. So we are going to start chunking it up. And today we are going to review the T-Rex models from PNSO. We're going to go through different episodes by manufacturer. And then at the end, we'll have a King of the Hill competition to determine which models are the best T-Rex models. But for all you people that have been asking for T-Rex, we are finally getting started with the PNSO T-Rex models. Well, as always, George, what's the fossil record we have on T-Rex? Have we found any fossils? Oh, man, <laughs> you know, I can't seem to recall. You know, the T-Rex is so rare. I'm, I'm joking. We find T-Rexes all the time. Everyone knows about Sue, that which was found in the 90s, and then there's Scotty that was found more recently in the 2010s. Those are the two biggest, two most complete T-Rexes. There's contention between both of them. Okay, George, we have five different PNSO T-Rex models to look at today. Let's start with the original Wilson model. All right. It has a very Jurassic Park-esque look to it. For all my Jurassic Park fans, this T-Rex looks awesome. Although I will point out a key difference between them is that this skull seems to be a little short. Typically, the, the skulls point out a bit more towards the eye orbits, so this is a very interesting choice. They do have those nose ridge osteoderms, which are characteristic of T-Rex. These brow horns are a little bit more dull than I'm used to, but let's go to the teeth, which are not dull. They were actually kind of sharp. I'm, I was surprised when I opened the mouth that these teeth were pretty spiky. Um, it opens and closes. Uh, it doesn't open very far. Looking at the scales, I can already see that this guy is a little wrinkly or saggy. So this must be either an old T-Rex or a T-Rex losing weight. <laughs> the scales do seem to change from the bottom to the top, but they're all sorts of different sizes. You see they're kind of big here. They shrink and then they get kind of square and rectangle shaped at the bottom. Uh, if we look at the toe, Tyrannosaurids are famous for having a pinched toe in the middle, so you'll see like two full toes on the side, but then this kind of tapering off in the middle. So it has that. Time for a cloaca check. Uh, this one does not have a cloaca, surprisingly. For the scale of detail that this T-Rex has, not having a cloaca, that's, that's interesting. I will say that the scales aren't really accurate. Since they're all sorts of different sizes, I think they were playing it kind of safe. But there is a museum in uh, Houston, the Houston Museum of Natural Science, that has T-Rex skin impressions. And all of them are smaller than a Tic Tac. Like these scales are tiny. So seeing these big scales on this model tells me that it's not very accurate. The tail comes to a tapering. It's a little bit flat there. I like my dinosaurs with sharp tails. So I would say starting out, this T-Rex is uh, it's okay. Okay, George, that was the original version of Wilson. Let's take a look at the more recent version of Wilson that they released. This one also has an articulated jaw, which, there we go, it opened. <laughs> so this one also follows a similar path in making the brow horns a little short. It does have the nose osteoderms, which are pretty cool. The mouth, though, does open a lot wider than the previous model, and I like that because Cyrix had a big bite. You see the arms on this one are a little bit smaller than the other T-Rex, uh, which I didn't really point out in the previous one, but you can see how tiny they are. I think this this proportion is too small for the size of T-Rex. For reference, T-Rex's arms are the same size as an adult human's arm. So your arm, if you're an adult, is the same size as a T-Rex's arm. And their skulls are about the size of a, of a third or fourth grader, you know, about four feet tall or four feet long. Let's look at the scales. So the scales are smaller in this one, so I would say they are more accurate, but they are still a little bit too big for my, from what I've seen. Bottom scales are, are pretty nice. They kind of have this radiating effect. Let's look at the bottom toes. You do see that pinching off at the top. It's kind of like coming together. Cloaca check. It's right there. Very subtle, but it is present. And we got a sharper tail on this end, so that's pretty nice. So one thing that sticks out the most about this T-Rex model is that it is chunkier, which I like. I like my dinosaurs chunky. So I think this is this one's pretty good, with the exception of the scales and the arms. These, these are really tiny. Now, when you say chunkier, as I look at them, they appear to be pretty much the same size and thickness are you just talking that you can see the ribs in the first model and not in the second model yes that's what i meant by chunky okay george that took care of the wilsons from pnso let's take a look at cameron from pnso which was released more recently than the two wilsons so this t-rex is even more 
chunky. It's just it's just an absolute unit. You know, that, that's a term we use when the chunk level is high. It has a mandible that opens and closes, so its teeth look a little bit different than the other ones. These are more more solid, more robust, which are exactly what Tyrannosaurus's teeth were for. They were for crushing bone. They weren't uh, your typical flesh slicing kind of teeth. These were meant to crush the bone of their prey, like Triceratops and Ankylosaurus, which were very bony dinosaurs at the time. Its crests are more pronounced, which I do like that, uh, because in life they would have had a keratinous sheath over their, their brow horns. Its nose bumps are present there, those osteoderms. The arms are chunkier. I like that they're a little bit bigger than the previous PNSO model, which is something that I had an issue with earlier. And oh my goodness, they did it. Look at the scales. They're super tiny. This is exactly the kind of size that I was talking about, like less than Tic Tac size. It's a bit harder to see that pinched middle toe, but they did add some scaling to that middle toe. So maybe that was their way of highlighting it. And there it is. There's a cloaca. The tail is very similar, tapers off in a similar point, but wow, this one, this one's pretty great. Hey George, is there any evidence to indicate which way the cloaca would have been oriented? That's a good question because it changes between reptiles and birds. They, they all have different orientations. So I think they were just uh, testing out which way it would have gone. So since they went one way with the previous model, they probably went another way with this one. The only best preserved cloaca we have is from a Cetacosaurus, and that was a herbivorous dinosaur, which is not too closely related to a T-Rex. So doing the same kind of cloaca that that one had wouldn't it also be very accurate. All right. Yeah, but I like this one. A neat little extra detail that's included with this model is a T-Rex skull. This is a, almost an exact replica on a miniature scale of Sue's skull. One of the most complete T-Rexes found. And just look at that. That is amazing. It looks just like the actual fossil, which I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing in person. Now, this skull laid out right here would be about the size of a small like person or a big child. <laughs> so if I were to stand this right here, that would be about the size of a person, just slightly elevated, right up to the arm. Yeah, we'd, we'd be about chest level to a T-Rex standing up. When I look at that skull, it looks like it's compressed. Is that fairly accurate compression? Yes. So this skull is laterally compressed. So it is at an angle. This is an example of the weight of the rock layers on top of it. Uh, this happens to a lot of fossils. If they're not like this, then they're completely flattened. Very rarely do you find a fossil that has not been altered by the rock layers. Okay, George, let's take a look at Andrea, the T-Rex from PNSO, which is unique in the stance that it is laying down. It is very unique indeed. In fact, it lays down like it's taking a rest or sleeping. This T-Rex is named Andrea, so I'm going to assume Andrea is a female. But of course, you know, you never know with dinosaurs. It's really hard to identify uh, whether they were male or female. In fact, one of the only studies that can come close to that is one that was done cutting open the femur of a T-Rex and finding a special bone called medullary bone. Medullary bone is a type of bone that forms when birds are about to lay eggs. So this extra bone uh, gets calcium from the mother's body and concentrates it to build eggshells. So that is very indicative of a dinosaur being female, which would make it a mother. So let's take a look at her features. This T-Rex has a lot more scaling on the front of the skull than the other ones did. Look at those big, robust scales. These are reminiscent of like a gila monster or a crocodile. That's pretty cool. Uh, the mouth doesn't open as wide as the other T-Rex models, but you can still get a good view inside. And the teeth are beautifully sculpted. The arms are still tiny and tucked in. And even the legs, the legs are folded just like you would see in and birds, they kind of tuck in their legs right beneath their bodies. Except in birds, this is all covered by feathers. So you only really see the feet at the bottom. She is very chonky. I like that. The scaling is very small, which is closer to what we know about their skin. There is a cloaca right there. It's very slight. You can barely see it. Tail does a nice little curve. And it would rest on the ground if you were to lay it down. So, so that one sounds pretty neat. How about the arm proportions, George? They look pretty small to me. They are pretty small. And, you know, I didn't think about this earlier, but it could be that the, the fat or the muscle is obstructing the full length of the, of the arm. So it could be that it is the right length, but it's just 
kind of absorbed by the muscle or the fat on this dinosaur. I rarely ever see a dinosaur in this pose, so I think this is a great uh, step in the direction of normalizing other positions for dinosaurs instead of just the hunting one. Obtuse question, George. Where would a dinosaur get calcium from? From bones. So calcium is found in bones because that's where we concentrate a lot of our minerals. T-Rexes were definitely bone crunchers, so they definitely got a lot of calcium from the bones that they would crunch up and eat. So they would actually eat the bones? Yeah, they would. They wouldn't even chew. they just swallow them. If you look at the dinosaurs that lived around T-Rex's time, they were all very bony dinosaurs. Think of ankylosaurs, triceratops, pachycephalosaurs. They all had very bony types of body features. Even Edmontosaurus had a lot of bony tendons in its body. Even though they weren't visible on the outside, these dinosaurs were very hard to bite through, which probably gave T-Rex the biting ability that it needed through evolution. A big theme about evolution is why do you have it if you don't need it? If you have something you don't need, it starts to go away, which in T-Rex's case, it's its arms, <laughs> which are very tiny chicken wings. Okay, George, we have one final T-Rex from PNSO, and that is Aaron the Young T-Rex. Awesome. We always get adult kind of dinosaurs. So seeing a baby like this one is just adorable. I mean, look at its eyes. They stare deep into your soul and beg you for affection. I instantly love this. Maybe it's because it's cute, or maybe it's because of the fact that it has feathers, which is an awesome thing to see on a T-Rex, especially a little tiny baby T-Rex. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is probably life-sized. This is probably the size they were when they came out of their eggs. Its legs look just like bird, baby bird feet. That's probably where they got the inspiration from. And its arms are still tiny, but if you notice on a baby T-Rex, the arm proportions are bigger to body ratio. So Tyrannosaurus went through kind of a transformation as they grew up. They occupied different jobs in the ecosystem. The younger T-Rexes would eat prey that would be too fast and too agile for the older T-Rexes to hunt. And the older T-Rexes would hunt prey that were slower, but also bulkier and more dangerous. So this is what's called niche partitioning, which is something that animals do today with their own young. If you look here, they do have their teeth outside of their, their mouth. I think all the T-Rexes did today, with the exception of uh, none. Yeah, all of them have their teeth <laughs> sticking out. <laughs> so there's no lips on these guys, but this feather pattern actually reminds me of a dinosaur called Cynoceropteryx. Uh, Cynoceropteryx was a, an Asian dinosaur, and it had feathers similar to this little guy that were orange with white stripes on its tail. So I think that's where they got the inspiration from this guy. Pretty cool. Since all the models are from PNSO, they all seem to be fairly accurate, but let's take a look at the head side by side and see if there's anything that jumps out at you. The original Wilson does take a lot of cues from Jurassic Park, and that one, unfortunately, as much as we love Jurassic Park, is not the most accurate representation of a T-Rex. The next PNSO T-Rex is in line. They look to be about the same kind of like model, and those, uh, I just don't like how the crests aren't as present on these T-Rexes. But in the updated PNSO version, the most up-to-date, you do see the, those head crests. So that's that's something that I, I like about that one. I would say that that one is the most accurate head-wise. If we look at the two Wilsons from PNSO, the new one is approximately double the cost of the original one. Would you go with that one at that higher price, or would you go with the original? You know, I'm a stickler for accuracy, so... I want to get the most up-to-date dinosaur as they come. So I, I would pay double the price for more accuracy. George, since you picked the new Wilson, and that's about the same price as Cameron, would you go with Cameron or the new Wilson? Cameron stole my heart. I'd, I'd have to go with Cameron. Plus, he comes with a T-Rex skull. <laughs> it just goes to show how much paleontology changes in such a short time because Cameron and Wilson, the new updated Wilson, they only have like a couple years of difference, but not too much change, but enough change that they, they're different. And like I said, I want to go with the most up-to-date, so I'll pick Cameron. So now let's put all five on the docket. Which of the five are you going to add to your collection? Probably Cameron. Not the cute little baby one? Oh, can I have two? No. <laughs> uh, well, this could honestly be any baby Tyrannosaurid. But only this one can be T-Rex. So I, I would still pick this guy. Okay, so George has decided that if he could pick only one of the PNSO models, he would pick Cameron the T-Rex. That concludes this episode. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.